Hello, this video is the start of many on information and studying it from an IT perspective. We're going to start by looking at seven different categories of information holders. And an information holder is an entity that collects, stores and processes information. And an entity could be a person, it could be an organization, it can be any thing. And before we look at the seven categories, I want to just talk about the difference between data and information. Now on paper, this comes along later in the course, and so we'll come back to it. But I feel like we're gonna mention these two words so often, it's important you are aware of the difference early on. So data, the definition of data is that it's raw, unorganized facts and figures. So for example, if I just showed you this grainy image of two letters and four numbers, that might be data. It's raw, hasn't been processed, it's not organized, it's just a fact on your screen. You might be able to guess what it is, but maybe you don't know for sure. Whereas information is data which has been processed, organized, and structured so that it has meaningful context. Meaningful essentially means it's useful to us and context is some wider understanding of why this data is there and what it's for. So for instance, the context of this little bit of data might be that it's part of a departures board on an airport. And so we can see our data within wider context. Now that's information because it's it's got that context. Now the two words data and information are often misused. I'm sure I'm going to miss I'm sure I'm going to mix them up myself at various points, but that on paper is the difference. So then let's look at some of these entities that collect and hold information. Starting with just individual citizens, so all of us, we have information about things, you know, related to us and also about other people, other organizations we are aware of. So about ourselves, we've got things like exam results and our passport and our username and passwords. All of these are information about ourselves, but equally we know, you know, contact details of our friends and businesses. We know facts about people around us. All of that is information. Now looking more at groups from now on, businesses are just different organizations that are trying to make profit. An organization is a group of related people. A business is an organization trying to make money is the aim. So of course, such a wide range of businesses and the actual information would depend on what they're doing. But at a basic level, most businesses will hold information on financial aspects, also employee information. So that might be where the employees live, how to contact them, how much money they make, as well as other customer and commercial information. So customer information might be about their username and passwords, Commercial might be about things like the stock levels in a warehouse, specific things to what that business does. A third holder of information are educational institutions. So these are effectively things like schools, colleges and universities. They're trying to teach people content at any age, not just at your age, but any age. And so they have to hold information about staff and students, as well as information about what they're teaching. So often there'll be an online website, this is one from UCL, a university, where it holds all of their course information. That's fairly important because that's really the main service they are providing. And so it has to be held and organized and be easily accessible to the students. Now governments collect more and more information. So if you want to define governments, you can say they are the departments that run the country. We're mostly thinking about people based in say Westminster, in the House of Parliament and the politicians, but it's not just politicians, you've got other people working for these departments. So things like the Home Office, Department for Education, Foreign Office, they've got their own specific purposes. So the Home Office, one of the things they do is manage the police and prisons and so on. Department for Education is obviously schools. And they'll collect information on what exactly they are aiming to do. So the DfE, We'll collect information about schools and how many teachers there are and what subjects they teach and all that sort of stuff and exam results. Um, so essentially governments hold information on their citizens. The citizens are people who live in that country. And also, you know, thinking especially of how to save a foreign office will collect information on other governments. So they're keeping track of each other to try and make various decisions to run the country. And then moving on to the last three, starting with charities. So charities are 
organizations aiming to help other people, help people who need the help. Uh, so you often they rely on donations from people. Charities don't make money. They pass it on to people who need help. And so if you're managing donations, you must collect information on things like the donors. The donors are people who are giving information as well as the staff and donees, people receiving the donations. Healthcare services are things like doctor surgeries, pharmacies, hospitals. The NHS is a, a major healthcare provider, but not the only one. You have private hospitals and dentists and so on. And so, you know, if they're providing things like prescriptions, medicines to the patients, you've got to keep accurate records of your patients. What prescription did you give when? How big was the dose? Things like that, because ultimately you're dealing with people's health can't really get much more important than that. Often medical data is the most precious and the most risky to lose because it is so essential to our being. And the final category you mentioned are community organizations, which may be charities and often are, but the key difference between just a charity and a community organization is they work specifically in local areas. So they're usually not nationwide, they're usually targeted and quite small actually. So things like a religious organisation like a church or a mosque, a youth club, sporting clubs, things which generally haven't got loads of um, connections elsewhere, they're kept local and support that local area. So they might have things like events and, well, membership they'd want to keep track of, especially because, you know, often money is tight for these smaller organisations and they need to keep on track of who is a member and what sort of events they are holding. 